What's up, everyone, and thanks for listening to the Average Nerd Podcast. It's your boys, the Average Nerds. Uh, it's just a bunch of average guys talking about nerdy things. I'll be your host for the day, Juan. And joining us, as always, we have Majin Ooh, Jorge. I don't want to grow up. Pallet Town's finest, Jay. That's right. Our resident Yu-Gi-Oh! master and trivia champion, Dave. Skinny kawaii de oshiyoki o. And the last airbender himself, Av. Yo. Well, if you couldn't tell by that intro, today we're going to be talking about everything anime. Happy anime, everyone. We're hey. in the Ooh, middle anime. of May, so we're halfway through. The way we like to start off every episode, we like to do our GTK of the day, or our getting to know you question. Today's GTK of the day, if you can live in any anime world, what would it be and why? Jorge, go ahead and start us off. I think my pick is going to go ahead and be Pokemon. I would like to catch them all in real life. <laughs> and Pokemon Go has brought us, I guess, one step closer. And so it'd be kind of cool to really do it. It also seems like one of the safest to be in compared to some of the other animes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that one. Can you imagine Pokemon during quarantine? Just being stuck at home with like your ghastly or something. Oh man, I don't know about oh, ghastly. Scary. <laughs> or like you're coughing. It'd be smelly. Or muck. I bet you he'd like leave purple slime everywhere. I wonder who would be a fun uh, Pokemon quarantine buddy. Anyone but those. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto would be fun because he could just oh, oh yeah. yeah whoever you want to hang out with. There you go. That's a that's a good answer. <laughs> cool, Dave. How about you? I ended up picking. Uh, the One Piece world, just uh, sailing on the Grand Line or even sailing in the sky or deep underground. And then I wouldn't have to worry about not knowing how to swim because I don't know how to swim. Because like, if people that have devil fruit, uh, fruit power <laughs> aren't able to swim, then I, I think I have a chance. <laughs> Team no swim. <laughs> right? Team no swim. How about you, Jay? What's your uh, world that you'd live in? I mean, as Pallet Town's finest, I think the easy pick here would be to join Jorge in the world of Pokemon. But I'm going to leave my hometown of Pallet Town, and, and I want to go to that uh, Alola area. Oh, because, Alolans. yeah, the, the, all yeah. them Alolans over there. Because there's a lot of cool-looking Pokemon. I mean, you know, a lot of us grew up with Pokemon, but those Pokemon are the same but, like, not. So it'd be kind of cool to see those up close, too, and, you know, catch them all with Jorge. You know, we'd, we'd get our whole little gang over there and just do our thing be pretty I think, cool i think worldwise too that'd be like the closest thing to a tropical island yeah it's like the closest like yeah Hawaii. yeah 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 <laughs> good nice. choice that's a very good choice what about you Juan? where where would you want to be the digimon world yeah because one digimon. you kind of get you kind of get two worlds in one because you get your regular world that we all live in right now and then if you just want to escape it you, you know you go to the digital world where you have your partner digimon they could digivolve you get to mess around with Devamon and try to kick his ass. And you get a little bit of that tropical feel as well in their island. How about you, Av? Um, since my anime viewing is very limited, and I, I guess I'm the newbie around for animes, um, I'm going to pick, I guess, the My Hero world. I guess even the, the high school, UA High, right? You kind of watch that and you're like, it'd be cool to go to school with a bunch of aspiring heroes and go through... The trials and tribulations they're going through and i think it'd be fun you're talking about dangerous places and other animes yeah that my hero is dangerous but um if you're in school you're, you're stuck with a bunch of heroes right so or I'm, upcoming I'm heroes so, yeah. i'm gonna put out on the spot i'm gonna put out on the spot yeah go you're, ahead you're gonna be a hero what, what what's your power though uh my power is damn you jay <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, you're gonna be in a, you know, school of superpowers. You know, there's a bunch of odd, odd powers, right? In that school, how about if I, um, just uh, my power I get from cussing a lot. <laughs> the more he cusses, the, the more stronger I cuss, he gets. The stronger I get, right? <laughs> wow. You I know, it, it could kind of be like um, Black Bolt, the What's Marvel character who, who, who can't talk because every time he talks, it like. 
creates destroys. sonic waves that will destroy the world. Right, but <laughs> when Av curses, it's creating the sonic waves like Black Bolt. So the oh, the, well, the more vulgar, you would to have curse. to watch. Every I better watch word what I say, say, right? Yeah. yeah, that's like everyday life, though, for me, right? There you go. <laughs> you gotta watch what I say. <laughs> All right, so that about wraps up our GTK. What we want to do today, a lot of us here actually are pretty new to anime or don't watch anime as often. So Jorge is going to give us a little bit of an anime 101 course, crash course in anime. Uh, so go ahead, Jorge, take it away. Okay. I guess we can start with what exactly is anime? So after a few Google searches and a couple YouTube videos, this is, this is what I came up with. First, the Oxford Dictionary defines anime as a style of Japanese film and TV animation typically aimed at adults as well as children, while Wikipedia tells us anime is an art form, specifically animation, that includes all genres found in cinema, but it can be mistakenly classified as a genre itself. In Japanese, the term anime is used as a blanket term to refer to all forms of animation from around the world. Now, I think that can get a little confusing because while those are the technical answers, there is somewhat of a cultural separation between cartoon and anime. And I think more commonly Western animation, mainly in the United States or other countries, are referred to as cartoons. And anything originating from Japan with a target audience of Japan can be referred to as anime. You guys following me so far? Can you go back to the last slide? I, I need to finish my notes. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there going to be a, a test on this afterwards? <laughs> oh, there might be a pop quiz. Oh, man. I, I hope you guys are paying attention. Is it open note? Oh, man. I'm, gonna, I'm sitting next to Dave. He's got all the answers. It, it's virtual, so everything's open note now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, sorry no, for it's the okay. tangent, Jorge. Go ahead. I got, I got more stuff for you get to quiz you guys on. A couple more, A couple more little facts. So, I don't know if you guys knew this, but anime actually dates all the way back to 1917. Oh. Were you born then, Ev? Oh, come <laughs> I'm just kidding. Blow, blow on. <laughs> close. 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 <laughs> close. <laughs> just wait a second. Slow. Wait a second. I remember the first one they aired. Oh, man. Honestly, I was shocked. I could not believe that it dated that far back. But there was this big earthquake in 1923, and over 90% of the anime before that date is lost forever. Whoa. Yeah. Dang. Let's jump forward a little bit. I just want to mention one person before we move on. He goes by the name of Osamu Tezuko, and he is known as the father of manga and the godfather of anime. He is also responsible for influencing a lot of the anime that we have today because he invented a lot of the tricks that they use in manga and anime as far as drawing styles and techniques. So, for example, the extremely detailed backgrounds to show a strong setting, the idea of movement, showing that uh, the distorted images to show that we're getting movement across a page, even down to his eyes, the way he drew his eyes and his hair can all be seen as an influence of how things are made today. Yeah, I know. So he draws um, spiky hair on everyone? <laughs> like Goku? I know. Not yeah. everyone. I know uh, Akira actually did that pretty well, that method of um, painting the backgrounds very intricate, and they, they yes. use those to, um, to be their backdrop for, the, for all the action and everything. And when Akira got really pissed off, he had super spiky hair. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting think... you mentioned Akira. Did you know that Akira had a $10 million budget? Ooh. And oh, wow. it was pretty, it was one of the films, animation films that kind of brought animation up on the map, being that they increased their frame rate so that you get a more fluid animation. If you guys remember the movie compared to other stuff that was coming out around that time, it was a lot more fluid. Going back to the background thing. So does that mean like Dragon Ball did the total opposite? Because their background was nothing but like green <laughs> grass. Just green yeah. and blue. It was a lot of green grass and blue. And sky. Oh, you know, one thing I didn't, I mean... I feel like I should have known this, but I, I did not know this was, so like I was mentioning earlier, there's different types of categories for anime. And a lot of those categories break down into their target market. So whether it be age group, gender and whatnot, a lot of the anime that we all watch and love today, as far as in the United States, fall into one category, which is shonen. I'm sure a lot of people knew that, but I, I didn't realize how many fell into the shonen category. And I think originally shonen was created with the intent uh, or the target market of boys from the age of 10 to 18. Now, of course, with uh, present times, it's totally different. Anyone can watch these, and I think even us included, 
we're we're all above 10 to 8 like well above 10 to 18 and we still appreciate these shows so was that a shot and a half Dang, I shot it out. well above God. <laughs> well, I'm, man, I'm talking on. about myself i mean i'm i'm past 10 years way past you're the years youngest one on you're this the, podcast yeah, I was gonna say, you're the baby here <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i i fit into that category of where i'm i'm pretty past that point you know oh, so man, that just makes us all feel better yeah i'm sorry i didn't <laughs> i didn't mean it that way but you know we can still appreciate that's what the one thing i think a lot of people like about anime is you could be of all ages all genders it doesn't matter and you can all have an appreciation for it uh, aside from like a shonen though don't forget like they also have other Ooh. genres like uh shoujo. thank you for reminding me uh-huh. yes um actually another uh popular anime that was popular for well it lasted from 1991 to 1997 and was popular in the united states was sailor moon and Sailor Moon fits into the soju category. Show shoujo category. Shoujo <laughs> category. I apologize for oh, pronunciation. Soju. Watermelon soju. <laughs> yeah. Better than better That's than plum kind. soju, right? Fact. Well, thank you, Jorge, for uh, giving us that crash course in anime. Hopefully we all learned a little something today. I know I did for sure. Moving forward though, let's uh, talk about some of the animes that we actually watch. That list is would be pretty long. I'll just talk about a few of the favorites. Naruto off the bat, Naruto Shippuden and, and Boruto. Um, My Hero Academia, uh, Demon Slayer, Sword Art Online, Cells at Work, Shield Hero, I think I said Dragon Ball Z, Digimon, Pokemon, all of those. Uh, the list goes on. I mean, I've watched a lot. But don't get me wrong, there's still a lot that I, I need to watch and need to add to the list. Like, I haven't finished Bleach. I haven't finished One Piece, Black Clover. I I haven't watched Cowboy Bebop. Ooh. I feel like that's gonna burn we're, we're some people's you ears. We're asking you animes that you have watched. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I can get carried away with this one. Okay, okay. So you guys know which ones I've watched. That's that's pretty much that sums it up. Whenever anyone asks me what my favorite anime is, it's automatic and it's a pretty quick answer. Um, the anime is called Your Lie in April. I don't know what the Japanese name is, I still need to but watch um, that. I'm not gonna spoil too much of it. But basically, it's about this boy who's like a piano prodigy, but then like his mom died, and ever since his mom died, he's like, oh, I don't want to play piano anymore. I can't do it. Like it's too difficult and stuff. But then he meets like this girl who plays violin, and uh, yeah, you know they, yeah, watch that. It's good. It's a tearjerker. You'll they cry. Make beautiful music. They do. They make really beautiful music. Yeah, that's it's actually what I really love nice. about like anime yeah. in general is just the music nice how about you dave gonna be like jorge here I have pretty long list <laughs> uh it kind of started with dragon ball the original um dragon ball not z uh because then like i'd wake up super early to get ready for school and it'd be on and um biker mice from mars would be after that too this is one of my favorite shows hey, biker mice from mars <laughs> do you remember uh big bad nematodes too oh yeah, Yo. yeah. wow that was the one <laughs> let's see what else um i don't know if you guys remember like sci-fi channel used to have saturday anime in the mornings on saturday morning <laughs> but then like some that i i remember from back then is like part project Echo, fist of the north star tenchi muyo and then like of course dragon ball z sailor moon were like some of my favorites like i'd go to um our local comic book shop and then they'd have videos for rent with subtitles so that's how i watched uh dragon ball and sailor moon but yeah you know, the movies like studio, your Studio Ghibli movies by Hayao Miyazaki. There's Your Name by Makoto Shinkai. And then I would just watch a whole bunch of anime now on Crunchyroll because it's so like accessible nowadays. Bleach, Death Note, One Piece, Naruto, uh, Dragon Ball Super, My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer. But I would say, did we get into our favorite anime yet? Isn't that <laughs> what we're doing? <laughs> just Wait, so what? So, so none, of so none of those were your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> I think I know Dave's favorite. Go for it. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop. Like Jay, music was a big part of me liking that show because I just appreciate music and everything. Like just from the start of the intro, you get your like bold colors and use of like silhouettes, and they just match the music so well. And also being a graphic designer, like I really appreciate that style for the intro because it reminds me of um, Saul Bla- uh, Saul Bass, who was a graphic designer, like that use like minimalism and abstract shapes for his designs but basically like it was just a a good anime for me because it it matched action and music so well and like the themes 
of the story was basically like you're a bunch of like space cowboys basically trying to live day to day and still not even like coming up from your gigs like to even make a living and everything but then they still had each other to like get each other like through their missions and everything how about you ev what's some of your animes that you watch um was it the 1917 one the 1917 anime that one. was first released <laughs> was my favorite because I was actually in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I I love that you're uh, you're embracing this app because, like we've said no, multiple times funny. before, you don't look it. You, you I mean, look clearly younger than all looks, of us. Yeah, he looks the youngest out of all of us. No, Let's no, be that's real that's here. not true, guys. That's not true. <laughs> I hope you'll be back for next so... week's episode, Av. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to anime. Uh, so, like I said before, I'm I'm, a, I'm like a super newbie at this genre. And I didn't get in, introduced to this until I actually opened up uh, my shop. And I found out that anime was super, super popular here in the Sacramento area. I, I own a Funko-centric shop that, sell, that make Funko, uh, you know, anime figures. And shout out to Beehive Collectibles. Beehive, Beehive Midtown. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so customers would come in looking for certain characters, certain figures, and and I, I told myself, you know, I, I I think I need to start watching a few of these. My Hero Academia was one that people kept on talking about when I first opened, so I said, you know, let's give it a shot, and it ended up being a really really good anime, or it is a really good anime. So that that's the one that I I started off with because of the popularity of when I first opened. And then Demon Slayer came out, and people started talking about that. And it was one of those things where, you know, word of mouth, and it worked because I got hooked. Those are the two that I that I currently watch, so that makes them my favorites. But I do still want to watch a One Piece because a lot of people talk about that. Like, like Hori and Dave mentioned, there's just a ton out there, and they're all they all sound really, really good. So it's just having the time to sit there and watch all of it because there's a lot of older ones. I, I learned a lot of this anime culture from Funko and it's um, opened my eyes to just another world. It's something that I'm going to continue to follow and just watch more and more of. I had a question for you. Being a retailer and someone who like sells Funko, Funko makes a lot of different licenses, things like that. Not just with anime. Do you find mm -hmm. it almost like your responsibility to kind of do your research on the different things that you're selling so that you can kind of talk about it? Yeah, for sure. That was one thing, like I said, I had to do. I felt like I had to do was especially for anime because I did not know anything about it. And to watch a few, um, to talk to you guys about it, to talk to other friends uh, that watch anime about it, it just helps just in the, just having the business. You, you have to do your research. And it's with every, every genre that have toys out. So you just have to do your homework as a businessman. And it's working. It, it, it's all this stuff, like I said, it's very, very interesting, and, and I, I enjoy watching it. So when you're, like, at home watching cartoons or anime and your wife's saying, hey, Ev, do the dishes, you're like, no, no, I'm doing stuff for work right now. Doing yeah. Research. <laughs> yeah. Market research, baby. <laughs> I'm doing work. I'm working right now. <laughs> I'll do the dishes later. <laughs> uh, well, cool. I think I'll go last. So I don't watch anime as much as the rest of these guys do, um, but I have seen a few. Most of the American ones that are dubbed. So I've watched like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Pokemon, Digimon, Ronin Warriors. You guys Ooh. remember that one? That I can't believe I forgot that one. That was definitely that one of my favorites growing up. I think that was my first anime. I think I saw that before Dragon Ball Z was Ronin Warriors. Or um, do you guys remember Samurai Pizza Cats? That was another one. I did not know that was <laughs> that was a cool one. It's a deep oh. cut right there. <laughs> did you have any of the Ronin Warriors toys? Because I think I, those were some of the better toys. That's what I remember. Those. I did. I, I used to. I remember that the armor would come off. Yeah. And you put it on. Yeah. And then oh, I wish I had them still, but I think we donated it to the Philippines back in the day. Yeah, us too. Yeah, I I, I still have mine in a box. Everything yeah. ends up in the Philippines. But my fate, <laughs> yeah, it's for true. sure. All my Megazords are there. All my Transformers. Some kid in the Philippines is like has like all these the '90s toys that are worth collection. hella money. Um, but my favorite anime, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of slack for this because it's not really an anime, I guess, because it was made actually here in the states, but in an anime style, was Avatar: The Last Airbender. 
I don't know. Would you guys classify that as anime? I know it's I'm definitely the same style. I would say, you. just based off of the history lesson I gave you, I would say it's more of an anime-influenced Western cartoon. So it's yeah. total, It's it was made here in the United States, but it was definitely influenced by anime. Yeah, because you definitely have those Western cartoons that are influenced by anime. Like Teen Titans, too, is basically oh, sure. influenced by anime. But then you also have your... Japanese cartoons that are influenced by Western culture, like Lupin the Third, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So, I think there, I there's was wondering a blurred how long line it's there take for a JoJo reference. <laughs> for sure, none of none of that's concrete. So, I mean, it's yeah. up to it's up to your opinion. You know what you really think about it. For sure, even like Full Metal Alchemist is another one that was really mm-hmm. based off that Western culture. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, Avatar is definitely one of my favorite anime anime inspired cartoons for sure. Just because it, it really balanced humor very well along with the seriousness it's on netflix now so i'm getting my wife to watch it yeah we watched the first two episodes and she's actually really into it do not watch that m night Shyamalan movie no Um, hard pass straight garbage hard pass it's a hot pile of garbage i have a question for you which do you think was worse the live adaptation of the last airbender aka avatar or the live adaptation of dragon ball z Ooh, I didn't watch any of those. Actually. I'm gonna say Avatar, just because Dragon Ball Z had Jamie Chung, and I'm a big Jamie Chung fan. <laughs> Fair enough, valid reason. So, talking about animes, we all met through the collecting world. We're all collectors here. What are some of your favorite collectibles? It started off pretty early. Like, I'd even go to San Francisco and take the bus to Japan Town to buy manga, and trans like before like manga was even translated into English. I'd like I had a, a dictionary and tried to like translate everything myself. So I I read a lot of Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, Death Note. Uh but then I had a lot of like Dragon Ball figures, Pokemon cards. But then I say that my favorite so far are these One Piece mystery minis. Those f- for you who aren't familiar with mystery minis, they're basically a line from Funko where you buy each one but you don't know what's inside it. So it could be very challenging to like collect them all but i was able to collect these one piece mystery minis like the whole set i don't know if it counts as a collectible but like gundam models oh, i think oh, everybody sure. calls them gunpla but um when i was uh, when i was younger growing up like i remember buying gundam models and not even knowing like it was an anime cartoon thing i just saw them at this uh store this little local like i guess it was like a anime shop or like a Japanese Are shop. Here in Vallejo? And yeah, shout out to Vallejo, Vallejo baseball. baseball. Yes. Hey, Vallejo baseball, <laughs> RP. Yeah. But um yeah, they had the they had the Gundam robot things on the you know on the shelf and I was like, man, these are so sick. I'm about yeah. to buy one. I remember buying like one or two, taking them home, opening up the box and was like, wait a second. <laughs> why is it in pieces i had that same and, um, reaction to her yeah and you had to build them <laughs> and i was mad but then you know you follow the instructions you put it together and you know you got this clean little robot and what like, would make me mad was when they would give you those little stickers and yeah. then but like when you see the box that they painted them they and look they so way clean. better and then you put your little sticker on it and you're like oh what the mm-hmm. hell is crap yeah it's all crooked and everything and it's yeah. yeah but those were cool and um now that you know i'm like older and everything i actually grabbed a couple again recently and i want to like do it right like what you were talking about juan i want to like paint it and like do it legit yeah. but um yeah those that, that would be mine for sure all right uh av how about you favorite collectible right now is funko pop uh masto chaco mm-hmm. that's from uh was that 2017 comic-con i think is it, it was yeah. uh yeah fun yeah. I think it was a Funimation exclusive. and Back when it was easy to get into the booth. That's when it was easy to get. Yeah, I remember yeah. going to the booth, and it was, like, no problem. Yeah. And then fast forward to two years later, they shut down the booth. even the year after that, it got crazy. Was it yeah. crazy? I don't know. With I think it was... Um, fire hazard. They, I don't think they shut shut it down the year after, but I know it was it got crazy right mm-hmm. after that release. Yeah, it was, it was... I like it because she's one of my favorite characters in My Hero... It's an exclusive figure. It's 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 different from the original, the regular issue. It's got to be my favorite right now. Yeah, I like how they um, mixed like different materials on that one too, because you have like her translucent mask, and I think that's what yeah. makes her pop out of the rest of the set. Yeah, I remember back uh, then, no one really knew about My Hero Academia, so I remember everyone was just able to get like four or five 
yeah. El Chaco, Mast El Chaco's. I, I remember the people I was with who will remain nameless got like four or five. I didn't even get one because I was like, man, I don't even know what this is, right? <laughs> and they were like, I remember one of the guys was like, yo, get it. It's going to be worth a lot one day. I was like, no, it's not. And now I'm like, oh, damn it's, it. <laughs> it's the most expensive My Hero I Pop know. today. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, crap. I could have had like yeah. four or five. Oh, but you know what? It's all good. We don't do this for the flip. Mm-hmm. So I still have not watched My Hero Academia. I was going to say. Because I, I don't want to be tempted to buy the pops. But Juan, you're you're missing out on so Do much. It. It's so good. A lot I of people say you. that. I don't want to watch it because they don't want to start buying. Toys. Those pops are ridiculously expensive. Mm. You don't have to buy the pops. Just just watch it. Oh, that, that's what <laughs> happened when before I watched. I was late to watching Stranger Things, and then I watched season one and got the entire collection. <laughs> With the so. the My Hero Academia pops, actually, I bought the pops before I watched the anime. Because I really thought Bakugo's um, character design was really cool because he had, like, the grenades on his arms and stuff. I was like, oh, this oh, guy's yeah. like, cool. So I picked that one up first, and then, yeah, I watched Some the of anime. them definitely look really dope. I think, uh, what's his name? Endeavor looks mm-hmm. pretty cool with, like, the fire and coming out of his What face. else looks cool, Juan, in the My Hero pop? There's the, the, I don't know his name, but the one who has, like, water and fire on his arm. Todoroki? <laughs> I should get those. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Do it. Everybody, everybody, tweet at Juan and tell him to watch My Hero Academia. <laughs> yeah, those two were actually father and tweet son, one. the ones that you named. So you should watch oh, them. Makes sense. You can so, see how their relationship yeah. is if you want. Nah, you, you guys just spoiled it for me. So I, I think you're gonna like it. That's that's no spoiler. <laughs> you find no that spoiler. out early on. Yeah. All right. So moving on. <laughs> Jorge, what's some of your favorite collectibles? You know, I'm glad that you brought up uh, Ronin Warriors earlier because mm-hmm. as a kid, that was probably one of my favorite toys. Well, that was one of my favorites that I had. One that I have right now probably has to be my Itachi fig pin. Itachi being one of the characters from Naruto, and he mm-hmm. is a bad guy, maybe halfway. Yes, I don't know. Ooh. I don't want to spoil anything. He's a bad guy. Well, I don't need <laughs> um, to watch Naruto anymore. <laughs> Thanks, for it. Thanks. Um, I was about to watch it, too. <laughs> he's also the older brother of one of the main characters in Naruto, um, the older brother of Sasuke. Now oh, I really don't need to watch I it. I didn't know that. See? <laughs> you can... <laughs> that doesn't spoil Spoiler anything. Alert. I promise. It does not spoil Damn. anything. He, he was his brother from the beginning. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was his brother from the beginning. <laughs> I'm not too sure why, but apparently this guy's value is going up. I mean, he was one of the first fig pins that I purchased. And um, I'm glad I did buy him when I did because now he's starting to skyrocket, go above 100 bucks, I guess. But one of my favorites. Damn. Cool. So going to my favorite collectibles, I think same as Jorge growing up, it was definitely, um, as far as anime-wise, uh, my Ronin Warriors toys that I had just because the armor could come off, put them on. Uh, they were definitely pretty cool how interactive they were. Um SH Fig Arts actually came out with some figures of Ronin Warriors with removable armor. I just looked it up on Mercari. Someone's selling the entire set for eighteen hundred dollars. Oh I just saw that just now. I, I was going to say ridiculous. They, I mean, retail alone, they were already pricey. I don't know how yeah, how much SH, they added on because yeah, that Fig Arts is a lot. And yeah. then, but they had all five armors as well as the. Uh, in, I think it was called the Inferno armor, whatever the white yeah. armor was, when they got all the armors yeah. together. One day, when I hit the lottery, I will definitely be buying that. Did they make uh, um, Diaz, Kale, and Sekhmet? I, I didn't see any. And Anubis? Oh, the, oh, yeah, um, Anubis. the evil. Anubis, yeah. yeah. I didn't see any of the evil ones. Anti-hero. I only saw the other ones. But if you watch Running Warriors, you find out that they become good in yeah. the end. But... <laughs> Spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers! Uh, so much spoilers just in this filled episode. with spoilers. Oh, oh this my episode. god! I can't watch any anime anymore. What is going on? <laughs> but my favorite uh, collectible anime collectible that I actually do own is definitely going to be my Goku and Vegeta Funko Pops, um, the Amazon exclusive versions where they're eating noodles, mm. just because they're so freaking cute with their mouths, little mouths open, and eating these noodles. Um, if you haven't seen them before, definitely check them out. I Those think... are adorable. Yeah, any time I saw them eat in Dragon Ball, it just always made me so hungry. Oh, yeah, man, right they now. would make freaking noodles look so good. Dragon Ball and Pokemon. I remember they're eating like sushi and they're calling it a donut. And I was like, <laughs> what the hell? This <laughs> gotta love them dubs. <laughs> um, 
Those yeah. are terminologies we didn't mention was sub and dub. Sub Do you know the dub. difference? Yes. Sub means there's subtitles and dub means there's white people taking over. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? No? Whoa, whoa. Not necessarily. Where? <laughs> Not always. I gotta but say, like, I they've guess... gotten really, uh, they've gotten better over the time with, like, English dub acting, um, voice acting and stuff, because they For take... sure. And, yeah. and I'm just messing around. <laughs> like, I actually met Sean Shemmel, who's the voice of Goku in person, and he's, like, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Oh, um, even the voice of Vegeta, Chris Abbott. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Chris Abbott, too. He's Ooh. super cool. Jorge, you met uh, um, the voice actor for Vegeta, the Japanese. I, I actually have met both. I've met Chris Abbott, and I've met the Japanese voice Ryo actor as Honkawa. well. Yeah. Yes, he's also the voice of Captain... F- Captain... Wait. Falcon, Falcon Punch! Punch. <laughs> he said Captain Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is Captain Falcon, yeah. right? Yeah. That's just not what he says. He doesn't say Captain Falcon. That's like someone's like, oh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Batman doesn't say that? <laughs> I'm Batman. Talking about Batman is actually a really good uh, segue into this. We thought it'd be cool if we talked about current properties that we think would be good as anime. So any like Just League as an anime or Marvel as an anime. I know for me personally, I think it would be really cool to see Power Rangers as mm. an anime. That would be a good one. If you've read the Boom comic books... The story just gets really, really good, like way better than the TV show. Like they sh- introduce Draken or Draken, Lord Draken, yeah, Lord Dracon? Lord Draken, Lord Draken, yeah, Draken, 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 basically Dracon evil Tommy. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> they introduce like the power, the Ranger Slayer, which is the evil Pink Ranger. Um, they've done crossovers with like the Justice League, Ninja Turtles. What? So I think it would. Definitely be a really good anime. And RIP to uh, the actress who played Trini. But you'd actually be able to get her on without having to do like a reunion with the actual actress. Nice. Which would be pretty That's cool. true. I, I think it would translate well to being that it originated from Japan. That they brought For Power sure. Rangers over. But any of the Super Sentai. Um, Super Sentai, by the way, is what uh, the Japanese version was called before we moved it over here to call it Power Rangers. But any of the Super Sentai series would be really cool as animes, I Those think. Those masked heroes. Anyone else? I'm going to take a cop out here because I think it actually exists. There was a Marvel anime series. I mean, I haven't seen it or anything, but I, I know I've seen pictures of it before. Oh, yeah, like Iron Man so, in anime. Yeah. yeah, there was like a Wolverine in anime. Recently. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, was um, it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think they did have a Marvel anime. The Iron Man one was pretty good. Oh, you, oh, you seen it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Another spoiler alert, but they kill off War Machine. Oh, what? Oh, God. <laughs> what the <laughs> f***? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Man, no one can watch anything anymore. We spoiled it all. <laughs> so now we're going to get to the news portion of our show, uh, which we're calling Nerd News. I don't know if we're calling it that. I just made it up right now on the spot. <laughs> off to you, Dave. Thanks, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> so um earlier this week we got an announcement that they're actually going to be continuing the inuyasha saga so this is going to be following inuyasha and uh seshomaru's kid something i've been really waiting for for a long time um because i think the fillers killed the show bleach uh tite kubo recently announced that he's going to be finishing the series because the manga actually ended but then they never ended the anime series so i'm really excited about that one some rumors too fire force is going to be coming to an end and also um we all know that demon slayer uh, the manga just ended so we're we're expecting an end for that but I, they just announced that there might be a spin-off for demon slayer so yep that's all what? the anime news. back to you all <laughs> <laughs> cool um so yeah just to wrap everything up today um as always we like to end off every episode with a quote of the day uh so today's quote of the day will be provided to us by the very young looking av Cruz. all right i got so i got we're gonna do quotes of the day we got two oh from, nice. bonus uh, bonus bonus quote for uh all you listeners it's from the same from, from the same guy so, um, first one, 
No such thing as a bad student, only bad teacher. Can you guess? You want to guess who that's from? Is that Mr. Feeney? No, let, let me say let me say the second one. Never trust spiritual leader who cannot dance. <laughs> Tell and me I got this. Those are brought to you by Mr. Miyagi himself. Oh. <laughs> wax the on, great, wax off. The great Pat Morita. The late R. great R. Pat Morita. Rest in peace. Oh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Pat, Pat. You just got to know how to dance, man. If you want to be a leader, you just got to know, know how, how to, dance. to dance. Or at least wash cars. <laughs> or paint the fences. Or paint fences. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that about wraps up our episode today. Again, thank you for listening to us. Um, you can find us on Instagram at, and Twitter at Average Nerd Pod uh, or wherever you find your podcasts. We're also on YouTube at The Average Nerd Podcast. Thank you for listening. Feel free to comment, rate. Uh, we're open to suggestions. But until next time, see you, nerd. Again, I, I, I see a lot of people holding back their laughs. Just feel free to let it out. I think. <laughs> <laughs> there, how's that? There you go. You gotta leave that in there. Juan is. <laughs> he's having some technical difficulties over here. I'm leaving that one in. Oh, okay. uh, you gotta bleep it. I will. <laughs>